158 souls were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. 158 souls in two days. And that's more than what most men were baptized if they've been pastoring for 80 years. We owe God everything. <clears throat> I am thankful for the many blessings that he continued to give the truth of God. As we were telling the brothers and sisters on Thursday night, you know, God lives up to everything he said. He just keep adding daily to the truth of the gospel, such as should be saved. We, we just want to update the brothers and sisters of what God is doing. We had two churches that were given to the truth of God, which is a blessing. <clears throat> church that was given to us in Conway, South Carolina, and another church was given to us in Edgefield, South Carolina. I went to Conway, I went to Myrtle Beach some years ago and baptized quite a bit of people in both areas and desired a church there. And had no idea that the Lord Planned on giving us one. Talked to the bishop, he <clears throat> elderly gentleman, and he began to tell me how he said, I wish I'd known you years ago. He's going on 80 years old. He said, I never saw no one that God used in this manner. Where every place you go, hundreds are just going down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He said, Pastor Jennings, I concluded God didn't call me. <laughs> I said, why? Why you say that, Bishop? He said, well, I've been doing this for over 50-something years. And just couldn't hardly get no people. He said, I concluded after listening to you and watching you that I'm not called to do this. He said, I can't think of no one better to give this church to. He said, I want you to have it. And I said, Bishop, you, you, you don't have to give it to me. He said, I know I don't, but... I'd rather sit in the congregation and just learn this holy, sanctified way that you're talking about. You know, that takes humility. <laughs> Family in Edgefield, South Carolina, I believe the relatives passed who was the pastor and the church been sitting there. And what few members were left they suggested. I didn't know the people exist. They said, give it to Pastor Jim. They said, if anybody can do something with it, well, he can. God has made me a builder. And God told the apostles that ye shall catch men. Then said he that I'll make you fishers of men. These are the last days, and you that are watching, many don't like the program, but everyone have to admit, they don't see the people going down in water in the name of Jesus Christ or even hear about it and receiving the Holy Ghost on this magnitude, nowhere in America or out. You find people still joining churches, bowing head, raising hands, accepting someone they don't know, <laughs> being baptized wrong, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, like some of you have, joining the Baptist like some of you are, Methodists and undercover Catholics, Mormons and 
fake apostolic and non-denominational and hoodwink Pentecostals. We are encouraging the whole world, come back to Bible. Let's come on back. Come on back to the thing that God ordained. That's right, the whole world, come back. <laughs> Somebody got me playing live and they playing me back. I had to witness to myself over there. <laughs> Everybody got to come on back to what's written, and this is what's making the truth of God so strong, and as I keep saying, it takes the steam out of the false prophets who's trying to navigate the people away from this to them. Some preachers are mad because I won't even call their name over the air. The reason why I won't call your name because your name is just not worth knowing. That's right. yeah, that's right. God, man, my mouth is full of Jesus. Yeah. And being that my mouth is full of Jesus, I don't waste my time talking about nothing. We preach Jesus and him crucified. And what I see, and I'm looking right that the world is getting further and further and further on the side of Satan. And they are pushing God aside. Many of the churches, some of them that used to be strict, some of them that used to be believe in holiness and sanctification, but now, Many have let the world come in because the preachers have failed under the illusion that discipline, strictness, firmness is not necessary. And our young people is calling for other things. So what the so-called apostles and elders and bishops and prophets and half pipe evangelists and fake pastors are doing, rolling out the necessity things that will actually save the people's soul, they're rolling that out. And even they're calling it old-fashioned, not necessary. Mothers in the church, what they used to tell young people, they're not telling them no more because they're doing the same thing they used to tell them not to do. God have opened up my understanding and made me fully aware that we don't have to change. We don't have to detour. Nor do we have to deviate from what he gave his apostles to be successful in him. This is the strictest church program that's in America today. And it's shocking the people that so many, I've been telling the folk for years, everybody don't want cotton candy. We still got some collard green eaters, some turnip green eaters. Some good fried chicken, some good sweet potatoes. Everybody don't want to sit down and eat blow pops and tootsie rolls and corn chips and barbecue chips mingled with pretzels. In other words, everybody don't want this sweet candy religion. We got some hardcore sinners here. And they know candy will not sustain him or her. They live the rough life. They live the wild life. And they need something tougher than the devil that's on their back. Lord, take God and there's nothing tougher than the devil but God. Are you getting what I'm telling you? 
So God have given us a rough, tough, up in your face message. Don't care if you don't like me, and I really don't, because I don't like you either. I don't like nobody. I love everybody. Amen. Amen. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't be here in Miami preaching. Amen. Amen. I wouldn't be down here in Miami preaching. My throat is scratching now. When we left Philadelphia, it was raining ice. Heat still on. 30 degrees or less or more. And we come down here, beautiful weather. And hotels got air conditioning. My body ain't ready for no air condition now. <laughs> hey Amen. I've been sucking on halls and drinking water and everything, but my throat's a little scratchy, but I believe by the time God is done here, he'll massage my tonsils pretty good. Yeah.